News about developments in artificial intelligence is seemingly everywhere these days, from streamlining supply chains to automating order entry systems across different industries. AI technology is infusing a new round of innovation e into even the most staid and traditional segments of American enterprise. But in the investment community, AI is still viewed with a healthy dose of skepticism. Does it really work for investing? Today, we're fortunate to have with us Wes Krill, a Senior Investment Director at Dimensional Fund Advisors. Hi, Wes. You pointed out that while artificial intelligence might be all the rage, it's really not so new. Please elaborate. Yeah, I think that's a key point to keep in mind when you're you know, having any kind of conversation around AI is, you know, many of us, this brings back fears of when we were watching the Terminator movies in the 90s and Skynet. And so when you hear all the hoopla around chat GPT, I think people's minds leap to, oh, you know, we got to protect John Connor at all costs. But I think the truth around AI is not nearly as dramatic and much more longer tenured than things like chat GPT. Um, I think back to my first experience with what I consider AI, this was in the mid 90s. And, you know, you look at Microsoft Word, there was an enterprise surprising little paperclip named Clippy that would occasionally jump out on the screen and it would say, it looks like you're trying to type a letter. Would you like some assistance with that? And if you think about that, that's sort of the core behind many AI tools is they're trying to pick up on patterns and then based on the patterns that they observe, they're making predictions that they think might be helpful. And the quality of those predictions, and you know, this is what ultimately is going to get us to the relevance for investing, the quality of those predictions depends really on the stability of the patterns they're observing. So another example is when you think about these self-driving cars we have these days, again, another source of fear for many people out there, but they're able to recognize stop signs come to a halt as they approach a stop signs. Why are they able to do that? Because the appearance of a stop sign is consistent through time, right? So it's not like it's octagonal one day, hexagonal the next, a square the next day. Sometimes the words say stop, sometimes they say something else. So the stability of the evidence it's observing to form those predictions is much more robust. So if you think about where this would apply to something like the stock market, that's really where that intuition breaks down, right? We don't have that stability of patterns, the relation between different stock prices, very volatile as you go through time. So the relevance in terms of being able to make robust predictions about the future falls apart when you think about financial markets. And as you have pointed out before that, it's not clear AI tools are a recipe for consistently generating abnormal returns. Yeah, and that's, if you think about, again, what many of these tools are trying to do, chat GPT is a pretty good example, because if you look at what it is ultimately accessing to come up with this content, it seems creative on the surface. What it's really doing is going out there and scrolling through the internet and you know pulling a whole bunch of relevant data points and language and messaging, and then trying to distill that down into something that's useful as an end product. Whether it does that effectively, I think the jury's still out on that. But what it's ultimately doing is accessing what's already available out there in terms of information. And I think that's especially relevant if you think about what the pertinence would be for AI tools to investing, is they might be able to pull a slug of the information that is out there, but there's no way they're going to be able to encompass the broad level of information that is contained within markets where just in equity markets alone every day, you have on average three quarters of a trillion dollars changing hands. That represents a vast amount of information from the aggregate market. Um, so when I think about what I want for my AI, for my investments, it's the aggregate intelligence of the market represented by market prices rather than artificial intelligence tools. Sure. And, you know, hedge funds are big these days in using artificial intelligence to try to make predictions does that sounds really out there doesn't it i think what ultimately many of you know i can't speak for all the shops but ultimately what they're probably trying to do is to get an edge on other market participants in terms of maybe finding a new source of information that is not already captured in the market prices or maybe getting to it more quickly but the irony here is the process of doing that and making those attempts at extracting more information 
makes market prices even more informative because they're going to be incorporating information into prices implicitly. And once they do that, then the information is there and you would lose your edge ultimately. So if anything, I guess it could make markets even more well-functioning than they already are. Although there's not much evidence that they're leaving much on the table as is. Wes, does that kind of relate to what Professor Robert Merton has described as assisted implementation? Well, I think that's, you know, if you think about what the overall, I guess, health of a business would be and how well functioning it is, you know, this is getting above and beyond trying to figure out a better way to select stocks or try and time markets, but just make your business more efficient. And, you know, I think the idea of using AI to, you know, again, you're trying to use information to make predictions that are going to be relevant for your business. And AI could be helpful there. Um, you know, if you think about making more sense out of data or, you know, having, I guess, um, fact checking of data points as you're assessing them, uh, trying to draw insights from the information you're getting from your client resource management tools and software. You know, I think all of those are exciting opportunities for the role of AI. Um, but again, I think of those as not trying to find an inefficiency in the market where I think the, you know, the odds are heavily against you, but just trying to make your business more efficient and more scalable. And I think that's where we're more likely to see the positive elements for AI tools rather than just coming up with a better way of picking stocks. If anyone could pick stocks effectively, by the way, you know, you think about another uh, really exciting AI brand. I go back to my college days when you'll probably remember uh, Ken Jennings, who was a participant on Jeopardy, who had just this unparalleled run of winning just week after week on Jeopardy. And so they put him up against the machine. They put him up against that AI Watson computer. And he was a he was dethroned ultimately by Watson. So if anyone could outguess markets, I would think it would be Watson. Sure enough, we can test this in the data. There's actually an ETF that is based on the Watson supercomputer. It's called the AI uh, EQ ETF. And its performance since it started picking stocks back in November of 2017 has been about half of what the Russell 3000 has done over that period of time. So a very tall order indeed. Wow. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your time, Wes. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.